Victoria in Canada, and we'll get here. I'll make this quick and just read it. <laughs> right, I'm Norma Scotsman. Um, I am here representing the THRA in Canada. Okay, makes sense of that. Yeah. Right, a great deal of positive comment has been made about the, div the, the regulations in Canada, in particular Bill S5. I'd like to just give you a snapshot, not everything, just a snapshot of a more critical view of those positive comments. People have been saying, you know, oh, the legalizer nicotine, great stuff. Not at all. Right. Bill S5 is an act to regulate vaping in Canada, which purports to be designed to prohibit the sale of vaping <coughs> products to minors, including sending vaping products to a minor, prohibit the promotion of vaping products containing flavors that appeal to youth, requiring manufacturers to submit information about a vaping product to the Minister of Health before the product can be sold, restricting advertising on vaping products, increased penalties for tobacco-related offences, and the provision to permit implementation of plain packaging for tobacco products. The first and most obvious flaw in the Canadian legislation is conflation. Vaping products are tobacco products, Therefore, vaping is smoking. That's the logic of the people with the mindset of the Canadian regulators, politicians not prepared to suffer the mental agony of seeing a vaping public blowing out clouds of evil, noxious, smelling smoke. It's smoke to them. Now, did I read somewhere in the legislation that there are currently no devices available that comply with the regulations? No. This was Senator Petticlerk issuing a message from the House of Commons describing what she called the right tools in Bill S5 to address the issue of vaping. The full comment reads, However, the other place recognised that the current Canadian vaping market is dominated by refillable pots and that there are currently no devices available that comply with the regulations. As a result, the committee amended the bill to temporarily allow the sale of refillable vaping devices and to give the industry time to bring the devices in line with the regulations so that adults can access vaping products as an alternative to tobacco products. Here, many think she is referring to childproof tanks. There again is she. She talks about refillable tanks, not childproof tanks. Now I would like to comment on the ability of the Canadian vaping organisations, vendors and others to discuss vaping with the public under the new regulations. Again, Senator Petticlerk, she stated, re Bill S5, third reading, some of you may be wondering why, as some people have said, Bill S5 limits the sharing of scientific information that might help convince smokers to switch to a less harmful source of nicotine. Honourable Senators, I can assure you that's not the case. Bill S5 does not prohibit the, sorry, I've lost my place, prohibit the publication of scientific work in regard to vaping products. What Bill S5 prohibits is using scientific work as a means of commercial promotion for industry directed at consumers. This means that the vaping industry can share, and hopefully will share, legitimate scientific reports about vaping products in their entirety with their clients. But they cannot use parts of a scientific report as a marketing or promotional tool for their product. That seems fair and balanced to me. Fair and balanced. Legitimate. I think the Senator means approved that the vaping industry will be restricted to making comment which has been previously vetted and that it's only okay to use evidence that we say is evidence. Bill S5 is prohibiting using scientific work as a means of commercial promotion and marketing that is directed at consumers. In other words, giving consumers the information that they need to know to make a personal decision on whether to use vaping products to avoid smoking unless approved. The Honourable, <coughs> Honourable Peter Harder announced another study from 2017 in the journal Pediatrics, Pediatrics 
entitled Receptivity to Tobacco Advertising and Susceptibility to Tobacco Products, found that youth aged 12 to 13 had a higher receptiveness to e-cigarette advertising over tobacco. The study concluded that receptivity to advertising for each non-cigarette tobacco product was associated with susceptibility to smoke cigarettes. Emerging information also indicates that adult non-smokers' attitudes and behaviour may also be affected when exposed to lifestyle advertising about vaping. Given this research and the government's intention to make decisions based on best evidence available, the amendment was introduced to remove the exceptions that allowed lifestyle advertising for vaping products. So, in a single breath, the Honourable Peter Harder uses a snippet, part of a scientific report, as a marketing or promotional tool for his product, the Less 5 itself. And while the journal Pediatrics is being used as best evidence to create a law to silence those who would use what is truly best evidence for people to be able to make decisions, life-saving decisions. It's that disgusting rag, Pediatrics, the tabloid version of medical journals, going to be one of the cornerstones for the approval of scientific claims, and never mind scientific claims, user testimonials, one of the most effective and honest advocacy tools, they will also be prohibited. Now we come to the silly stuff, packaging. The labelling must be in English and French, that's your bottle, <laughs> 70%. It must be black and white and include ridiculous detail. This product contains blah, blah, blah. God help Canadian vapor. Or maybe, I don't mean to blaspheme, if not God, Perhaps the THRA will be there to help Canadian vapour. You see, I may be wrong. If the vaping industry is to be silenced, then perhaps that will also be applied to all organisations which represent or have connections to the vaping industry. It means, perhaps, that, for example, a scientific statement regarding vaping being issued by a vaping industry representative will be confined to being in-house and not open to public cons uh, mm. consumption. The THRA mandate is clear, to educate the public on issues to do with vaping and harm reduction. THRA has not accepted vaping industry financing. It can use any scientific claims because they are not being used as a promotional tool. They are being used to educate and to initiate discussion in the interests of the health of the wider public. THRA does not fall into the same category as industry or organisations who have financial connections to that industry and will not be silenced. <laughs>